Good morning, vinyl community, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, whatever time you're watching this. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, welcome uh, to a very beautiful mid-October morning where I am, which is absolutely irrelevant um, because you could be watching this in 2022 on a Friday night. And I could be dead by then, but who knows. Uh, but yeah, it was welcome. Uh, that time of year has come and gone. Uh, if you saw my last video, I was talking about, um, I was just a few days away from um, our record fair, our twice a year big record fair that we do here that I partake in. And that's come and gone. And we'll get to my finds uh, at that record fair shortly. But uh, uh, as a lot of you know that I'm a, I'm a buyer and I'm also a vendor there as well. So uh, I was very happy to meet a lot of people who watch these videos. It's very, I always say this, it's very odd when someone comes up to me and says, I watch your videos. And and uh, to all those people, it was really nice to meet you. Thank you very much for coming up to me and, uh, and telling me I don't suck. Well, some of you did. Anyways, cheers everyone. But it was nice to meet you all. Uh, like I said, I, uh, as a vendor, I did very, very well. And uh, there, was, there was some good stuff to be had. It wasn't the, um, <coughs> excuse me, it wasn't the best uh, music collector show that I've been to as far as digging goes, but it was, it was good enough. And sometimes good enough is good enough um, when you get to be my age. So anyways, we'll get to that uh, in a second. Uh, we're gonna reverse things a little bit today. Uh, usually I do new vinyl first. We're gonna do new vinyl last, just to shake things up a little bit. So we're gonna get to uh, what I believe is stuff I found at the uh, record fair last week, um, the Edmonton Music Collectors Show, the um, fall 2019 show. So we're gonna start with singles. Um, I got uh, some singles I was very happy to get. Uh, some were things I've long wanted. Some were these things I didn't know I wanted until I saw it, which is much the case uh, with me a lot of times at these record fairs. Uh, we're gonna start with this one, um, The Time Jerk Out. How about I show it to you on Paisley Park? I love the time and in particular this song. Actually an album that I'm looking for and I've been looking for for a long time is their album Pandemonium, which this one is off of. But I was happy to get this single for a couple bucks, uh, The Time Jerk Out. Got a uh, original UK pressing of The Cult Rain. Once again, if you're keeping score at home, these are finds from our spring 2019 Edmonton Music Collectors show or a record fair uh, as it's more commonly known i got an original copy of the cult she sells sanctuary uh the two calls were will be primarily used for djing i guess um got a, something i've been after for a long long time which is going in my box of uh my favorite singles of all time is paul simon's boy in the bubble i don't think i've ever seen this before on seven inch but there you have it a uh, copy of David Bowie's Young Americans, which I bought for the B-side, Suffragette City for DJing. I think that's a UK pressing, actually. Um, something that I, uh, I don't want to bring this band up a whole lot because it kind of creates a lot of uh, argument back and forth, whether they were um, worth their weight or not, in, uh, or whatever, if they were, uh, I guess, any good, I guess. But uh, Tin Machine. Under the God, which I think was the first single off that first Tin Machine album, which I love that first Tin Machine album. Second one, not so much. Just hang on, not so much. The first Tin Machine album, I think, is fantastic, but that was the, uh, I think it's the U.S. pressing of Under the God, the first single from the first Tin Machine album. Uh, this one I was happy to get because um, I broke this. This is David Bowie's White Light, White Heat, which was taken from his um, Ziggy Stardust live album. I have this, and then one day I was cleaning it, and I got distracted, and I got a little too zealous, and I cracked it. So I got a nice replacement copy of White Light, White Heat by David Bowie. And then something just totally off the wall, well, not off the wall, just kind of very dissimilar for what I just showed you, was Anthrax, original copy, I think this is a UK copy, of uh, Indians from their album A Mom Living, and it's on orange vinyl so 
those were the singles I got from the record fair. And then we'll get to the records in one second. Because we're coming up to uh, a grail of a grail. And I'm not going to put that in the description because I, I put that a lot. That I found a grail. But this one I've been after for a long, long, long time. Um, there is a version that's out now, I believe, on Four Men With Beards. I could be wrong. It's a really horrible pressing. And I think the um, there was a recent back... Universal Records released uh, re-released this record um, on their Back to Black series, I believe it's called. And that is equally as absolutely terrible. It's horrible sounding. So I've been holding off an original copy at a decent price, and I found it at the record fair in absolutely stunning clean condition it's caravan second album if i could do it all over again i'd do it all over you take that title for what you want original uk pressing as it says right there on deca absolutely just i'm not going to use the word mint as mint can be but it is um as nm as they say in the vinyl community, as near mint as uh, as I could hope to want uh, to find uh, for this record. It plays absolutely clean. Um, very quirky, quirky album. Um, they got a little bit more progressive after this one. Their first two albums are kind of anomalies in their catalog. A little bit of psych, a little bit of prog, a little bit of just weirdness. But um, this album in particular I've been after for a long, long time. This is uh, one of the grails I've been after, is the original UK pressing of Caravan. I'm going to say that title again, if, and I always mess it up, even though I know this album back to front. If I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over you. Anyways, uh, Caravan, original UK pressing of that album. Um, quick story about this one. I was in London... Um, not, not last year, but the summer before that. And I went to a car boot sale and I was alone. My wife and, uh, and daughter had gone off. Um, and it was our last day in London and they had gone off for a, kind of a farewell lunch. And I kind of said, okay, you guys go. I'm going to go to this boot sale that was in, I um, can't remember where it was exactly. Uh, and it was in London. And um, I saw this album this very very album there and I hummed and I hawed and I looked around and I went back and I hummed and hawed some more and then uh, it, was, it was the last day of my trip so I was kind of running out of some money and I, I just oh, I just couldn't bite on it it wasn't well I mean if you convert the Canadian to, to pounds it, it was a lot of money um, but I guess if you're in England it's all relative but um, and I ended, I ended up not getting it um, and then I got back to Canada and I for two years now, I've regretted it and regretted it. And then, lo and behold, at the same table that I got the Caravan was this one. Um, a band called Pulsar, the Strands of the Future. Um, just a on Decca as well. This one is, I believe, an original UK pressing. I believe. Anyways, uh, Pulsar is a band that not a lot of people know. They were kind of... Um, in the early to mid, well, it's about mid 70s. Um, I believe they were from France, actually. Um, progressive rock band. Um, a lot of people kind of compare them to a lot of the more um, abstract Pink Floyd stuff. Um, they draw a lot of comparisons with a lot of other bands, which I think is unfair. Um, they, I think the album should be judged on its own uh, on its own merits. But um, it's mostly instrumental and um it's very kind of organ heavy very um it's a, I, I it's i'm really bad at describing albums but i've been after this one ever since i kind of hummed and hawed over it and this is the, the exact same pressing um not the exact same copy obviously that would just be weird but the exact same copy i was holding in my hands in london at this car boot sale um and they had it there, and it was actually the caravan, and this was actually really, really well priced, um, or else I wouldn't have bought it, because we all know I'm a cheap bastard, as I always tell you. Anyways, Pulsar, The Strands of the Future, I was incredibly happy to get this album. Um, just a fantastic album, um, if you're into kind of um, 
instrumental, mostly instrumental, progressive rock um, that isn't, well, too grandiose, I guess, or too far up his own arse. Uh, I highly recommend this album, um, Pulsar. Very, very happy to get that record. And one more time, cheers, everyone. All right. Um, something totally, like I said, opposite of what I just showed you. This is still more record fair finds. I got a copy of um, the second Exodus album, Ple Pleasures of the, of the Flesh. Not their best album, but um, I've, it's an original Combat Records pressing. I so rarely see this record on vinyl that I had to bite on it. Wasn't that expensive? I actually, no. You know what? I think I did a trade for this one with another vendor, so I traded a couple things for this one. Um, not their best album. I think the album after this one, which is what Impact is imminent. I can't remember what it's called now. I'm blanking, but uh, Impact is something or other. Um, is a much much better return to form album. Um, more in tune with their first album, uh, but this one is it's it's not bad. I. I hadn't heard it in years, and I had to get it, obviously, because if you see these albums, you, you buy them because you don't see them very often. But it wasn't as bad as I remembered it, and it wasn't as bad as, if you go online and you read kind of retrospective reviews, it's not as bad as those reviews would would, would, would let you, well, you, would lead you to believe, I guess, the words I'm looking for. You can tell it's early. I'm having to dip into the coffee quite a bit this morning. Um, anyways, Exodus, Pleasures of the Flesh. Really happy to get that one. And here's a... Well, I don't want to say the find of the record fair because I think Caravan was. But um, this album on Discogs, um, and the reason why I haven't bought it is because it's one, it's one of only two albums I'm missing by this band um, that you all know I love. Um, the, the median price if you don't know what discogs is they have a the lowest price it's sold for and the highest price it's sold for and the median value is the average i guess the average price it sells for and that's why a lot of people base their vinyl um prices on the, the median is about 250 dollars canadian and then i found this at a table for 50 bucks and it's right now i'm only missing one album by this band is kiss this is the Symphony album, the um, Alive 4, the Symphony album, uh, recorded. Well, it's not all Symphony. There's two sets of um, a normal Kiss set, and then there's, in the middle part, there's um, with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra is in the middle part of it. Um, this is the lineup with Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Peter Chris, and Tommy Thayer. Anyways, um, not the best Kiss album ever, or not the best album in general. It's the symphony part of it's kind of shit, and actually the live performance itself is okay. Nothing that you haven't heard before. Um, I guess I'm trying to think of. There's no songs they do on here that you can't hear on another live album by them. Maybe Great Expectations. I can't remember if that's on another live album, but. Once again, that's not one of my favorite Kiss songs anyways. But anyways, I don't have it. The only other album I don't have is uh, Sonic Boom, which is not the greatest album either. But it, to be a, being a completist and owning <clears throat> several copies of the same Kiss album over and over again, um, I will track down Sonic Boom uh, at some point. So anyways, this, is about, this was about $200 less than the median value on Discog. So it was like a no-brainer was the uh, is it three LP three LP set um, limited edition numbered on the back here? Uh, I think it's a ten thousand. Only ten thousand copies were pressed. This is about four thousand one hundred and seventy six. Once again, if you're keeping score at home, Kiss Symphony. Uh, very very happy to have it just for the collection. It's not something that I think is incredibly fantastic and. Um, I'm objective enough to tell you that when one of my favorite bands puts out a, a, a kind of a shit album, and that's kind of a shit album. Anyways. I think nowadays when bands start doing symphony albums, or uh, especially in 2019, or if they start doing acoustic albums, because that whole thing is, the unplugged thing is kind of come and gone, that ship has sailed. When they do that, or they do symphony albums, you know they are completely out of ideas. Hi Metallica. 
and they own the Kiss album as well. As, anyways. All right. Um, Danzig's first album. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not the biggest Danzig fan in so much as I love this album. And I've been incredibly ignorant of his other albums. And I understand from other people that the second and third albums were actually probably better than, than this album. Uh, but this is the album that I know. It's the only album I've ever owned on a CD. Um, and when I was DJing a kind of a punk night uh, for years and years and years um, at a club here in Edmonton years ago, I used to play Twist of Cain a lot. Although it's not really punk, but it kind of fit the motif of the night. Who are you to judge me? I'm a DJ, for God's sake, so I'll play what I want. Anyways, Twist of Cain, and that always went over really well. And um, obviously, I'll be honest with you, this is not an original copy. This is a bootleg. Um, I've seen this bootleg in Berlin, and I've seen this in Prague, and I've seen this. I, haven't, I don't know if I've seen this in London, but... It's you see this a lot in Europe. These uh, this this bootleg in particular, it's colored vinyl, um, and the amazing thing was it really wasn't that expensive. And I will never find an original copy of uh, of the first Danzig album, so I justified it that. And it's actually a really good sounding bootleg. So if you see this one kicking around, um, it's well worth your pennies. Uh, I can't remember what color it is. It's some kind of splattered vinyl, but it's it's. An incredible replica. Um, it's got the barcode. It's got the deaf uh, American label. It's got the gatefold. Hell, I might as well just show you the vinyl. An exact replica of the deaf American sleeve. And I think it's a green splatter, what do you want to call it? Green vinyl. But uh, you know what? If Rick Rubin's not going to get off his arse and release the Danzig catalog officially on vinyl. Fuck it, I'm buying bootleg. Um, and I think there is a local store here that has the third Danzig album, uh, which is also a bootleg, which I may pick up because I understand that's a really good album. The How the Gods Kill, I believe it's called. Anyways, Danzig, first album, very, very happy to have that. I don't give a crap if it's a bootleg or not. It sounds fantastic. And I guess what I was getting to about saying I wasn't the biggest Danzig fan, is that I listened to this album twice in a row because I really, really liked it. I don't know if I've ever listened to the first Danzig album all the way through. Just, you know, Mother and Twist of Cain and whatever you needed for DJing. But it is a damn, damn good album. So if two and three are better than this one, I gotta, I gotta investigate the Danzig catalog, the first, you know, three or four albums. Because I just loved it, loved it, loved it. All right, um, are we into thrift store finds now? We are into thrift store finds, and then we're going to go into new new vinyl. Um, how is this for a nice find? Uh, Jefferson's Airplane After Bathing at Baxter's. But it's an original Canadian pressing on that red, um, they call it the Shaded Dog label. A lot of people revere this label, and they swear by it that it's the best-sounding selling pressings of its time. But an original pressing of uh, After Bathing at Baxter's by the Jefferson Airplane. Really happy to have that. Not uh, Actually, it's probably one of my favorite Jefferson Airplane albums. But that was a hell of a nice find. Ready for this? Uh, Italian Prague. Grobschnitt. Rock Pommel's Island. This is a Canadian pressing on uh, was it Bomb Records. But uh, I really do like, uh, I'm probably saying it wrong, and I have been probably saying it wrong for years, but Grobschnitt, uh, Rock Pommel's Island, which is, I think, believe, a, a kind of a concept album of sorts. But um, excellent album. I had their live album, and I ended up selling it to uh, a gentleman named, a local guy named Andy. Hey, Andy, if you're watching this, hope you're liking that live album I sold you that I regret selling you now. Anyways, I'm um, very happy to find this one. Really good album. I really, I, I really do like this band a lot. Uh, Italian progressive rock. Grobschnitt Rock Pommel's Island. Um, I didn't need this one because I already have it. But it is in such pristine condition, it's going to kick my other copy out of the collection. 
into a bin to uh, sell to someone else or trade or whatever I want to do with it. But I found it just a absolutely clean, clean copy of Yes, Close to the Edge. I mean, the cover is in just in perfect condition. Um, it's probably a mid-70s pressing. Uh, vinyl, there's not a mark on it. Close to the Edge, um, whenever I find clean, clean Yes albums, I'm picking them up and replacing any copies I have that aren't quite up to snuff. But anyways, Close to the Edge, maybe, you know, my top three Yes albums. But very happy to get that. I'm trying to speed this along. Ready for this one? This is one hell of a good thrift store, uh, thrift store find is King Crimson in the Court of the Crimson King. I believe this is an original Canadian pressing on the Red Atlantic label. This was found at a local Goodwill. Uh, King Crimson in the Court of the Crimson King. If you recall, a few videos ago I found a, was it a second UK pressing? Very early UK pressing on Island Records, which was my keeper copy. And I, I wasn't passing this one up, an original, I believe, said, I believe this is an original um, Canadian copy on the Red Atlantic label. I didn't even bother going on Discogs. So, I mean, if, if it's not, it's probably second pressing, but it, I'm 99.99% I'm sure this is an original Canadian pressing on the Red Atlantic label. King Crimson in the Court of the Crimson King. Very, very happy to get this one. Um, just because. Uh, didn't need it, but... I'm not passing it up either. Um, the band, Northern Lights, Southern Cross. I don't know this album very well. I know Ophelia. Uh, but it has Levon Helm, Garth Hudson, Richard Manuel, Rick Danko, and Robbie Robertson, which is the core of, of the band. Like I said, uh, Ophelia is probably one of their better-known songs. But um, very happy to find that at a local thrift store. I, an album I don't have, Northern Lights, Southern Cross by the band. I don't even know what year this is. Has to be early 70s anyways. Uh, might have been last video, or video before that, I found, uh, I was showing you an original, or maybe not original, but uh, very early pressing of this album in the textured sleeve. And I found another copy um, a couple days ago. The cover's not the greatest, but the vinyl's very clean, so I'm kind of going to mix and match and do one of my, uh, what I call a Franken album. It's Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young, uh, Deja Vu. So there's a lot of cover wear. But the vinyl is so nice that I think it will fit nicely into um, another cover that I do have. But uh, I found, so this is the second copy I found in the last few weeks of Deja Vu at thrift stores. All right, uh, new vinyl. We're going we're gonna to blow through this one really quickly because I'm going a little, uh, high, uh, a little bit long here. Um, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, OMD, one of my favorite bands from that late 70s, 80s synth period this is a brand new three album collection of their all their singles called souvenir really really well done um there's nothing much to show you it's very minimal um peter saville type design is very minimal uh all their singles on three lps um very happy to get that at a really good price pre-order price um not an essential thing i needed to buy because i have all the albums but it's good to have it all packaged all one all together, kind of like that Human League box set I, I found of, uh, or I bought, um, the Half Speed Mastered Greatest. It's um, did I need it? Nope. But it's uh, really it's really good sounding. It's good to have these bands sometimes just in a compressed package when you just don't know what to listen to. You throw on a best of, and you guys know how that works. The new Steel Panther called Heavy Metal Rules. Um, I read a lot of hype around this album. I have all the Steel Panther albums. I love Steel Panther. Some people don't. Fair enough. Uh, and I, I read a lot of uh, pre-hype and a lot of pre-interviews for this album, saying that there was this, this was going to be their hardest-sounding album, and and uh, and such as bands like to hype albums before they come out. But they kind of broke character a bit when talking about this album, saying it was their best album. And I don't know if it is, to be honest with you. It's it's okay. Um, yeah, I have. I'll, I'm gonna have to give it another spin. Uh, I've played it a couple times. Maybe, maybe I need to actually pay a little bit more attention to it because it, it, you know, not that they're the deepest band ever because it's pretty, you know, superficial. I'm not even going to say some of the album song or the song names because, you know, it could be kids watching for all I know. And if you're a kid watching my video, why are you watching my video? There's way better stuff on YouTube. Just turn me off and go watch something else. 
Heavy Metal Rules by Steel Panther. Eh, that's okay. Um, mono pressing of Miles Davis Milestones. Um, high quality RTI pressing, 180 gram vinyl. Um, this is um, the original mono mix um, that came out for Record Store Day. Then they did another pressing of that exact same Record Store pressing. Record Store Day pressing. Um, it was such a good price. I just couldn't pass up on it. I think it was like $19.99 for an RTI, RTI pressing on um, HQ 180 uh, gram vinyl. Gone Coltrane's obviously on this. Cannibal Adderley's on this one. This is the more or less the lineup that went on to do um, Kind of Blue, although I think Bill Evans isn't on this one. And it might have a different drummer, actually. Is it? Yeah, I think it's a different different drummer on this one. But Paul Chambers is there, Red Garland. Um, it's kind of the core of the band that went on to do Kind of Blue, um, minus Bill Evans. But uh, what a great album. What a good price. This one's if you, if you see this one kicking around for 20 bucks, it's well worth it. What a great album, Milestones by Miles Davis. Uh, I got a, an upgrade, better copy of Bill Evans' trio, Sunday at the Village Vanguard. Um, I need to get his album, Waltz for Debbie, which is kind of part two to this um, live recordings from the Vanguard. But um, there's a really good Bill Evans documentary on, uh, it might be on Netflix or it might be on the Amazon Prime movie app. I can't remember which one, but it's well worth watching if you watch it, if you have those apps or have those whatever they're called, I don't know, I'm old. But uh, I just saw it the other day, Bill Evans' documentary. It's re If you're into that kind of music, it's really, really good watch. So I got a better copy, upgrade copy of uh, Live at the Village, uh, Sunday at the Village Vanguard. One of the best live jazz albums of all time. I Trust me on that one. Um, I'm gonna skip this one because there's a little bit of story to tell on this one. Um, Aha, uh, I really do like Aha, whatever. And uh, they're finally releasing some of their later 2000 albums. Um, when they got back together, they did a reunion. And they did about four or five albums. And they re-released um, their album called Lifelines. And I have this one coming, uh, another one coming in the mail tomorrow, which is the one I'm really, really wanting called uh, Minor Earth or Major Sky. Minor Earth, anyways. It'll be in the next video. <coughs> but this one came out... Um, uh, last week, it's called Lifelines. Um, in fact, this one isn't even open yet because the one I copy I did get, I did play it, but it came with a really badly bent corner, so I sent it back. They sent me a new copy. I got this in the mail the other day. Um, a couple good songs on this one. The song Lifelines and Forever Not Yours is really good. Did Anyone Approach You is really good. Um, but they did a couple albums when they got back together that's really kind of middle of the road. Um... Just really slow paced albums that I really wasn't fond of. And this is one of them. This is not my favorite album by them, but I'm a completist, so I had to get it Lifelines. And then the one I'm really wanting, Minor, Minor Earth Major Sky, I'll be getting the mail tomorrow. And that's the one I'm really excited about. That was their first reunion album they did. Um, so that should be in the mail tomorrow. Uh, another of the Golden Earring reissues came out. Uh, they're reissuing. Their catalog slowly again, but on colored vinyl, blah blah blah. And I don't have these ones, so I went a bit. I bit on this one. It's uh, limited number number ninety five. This is um, Paradise in Distress. What year? I can't remember what year this was now. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine. Actually, this was the last album of the nineties for them. Paradise in Distress. Uh, music on vinyl. Uh, as I always say, I should be getting kickbacks from them, my favorite reissue uh, label by far. Um, but they're being so kind as to be uh, to reissuing the Golden Earring albums, and I'm missing a few of them, and this was one of them. Paradise in Distress, not their best album. It's okay. It's, it's pretty good, but not their best album. But I was still happy to have it, um, like I said, being the completest for Golden Earring. That came in the mail, and uh, there's, I can't remember which one's being reissued. Again, that I just pre-ordered. You'll see it in a video. God. Just... Anyways, I got to talk about this one really quickly, and I'm getting on in time here. This is the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper. This is the double um, anniversary, 50th anniversary that was remixed by um, by uh, Giles Martin, or Giles Martin, however you want to pronounce it. Um from what I read, 
Anyways, I got this one here. I wasn't going to pick it up. This is the double one with the second album of kind of alternate takes. Uh, I wasn't going to buy this one because I have many copies of Sgt. Pepper's and, you know, um, it was, I'll get to the mono stereo thing in a second, but um, I went into a record store, well, a store that sells record as well, but they're not primarily known as for records. And this was in their clearance bin, which I found really kind of weird. And so it was like, like fifteen dollars less than what it was before, so I bid on it, and then uh, I just found it weird that it was in their clearance bin because usually they, when stuff is being deleted, that's when they kind of put stuff in their clearance bin. And I go home and I find out that um, a lot of the talk going around now is this album, the deluxe double, is being deleted and it's being replaced with, or just they're going to go with the single vinyl version of the uh, of the Giles Martin. Um, remix of this album so this is quickly going out of print and there's a lot of people who are now scrambling to find this record because it's going out of print and people like me who never picked it up you can there's still copies around um kicking around um so if you see the double one the word is and i read on i uh, went online and looked word is that it is going out of print very quickly um uh, it's it's really good it is really good giles martin he went back and used back in these days. I know a lot of people will know this. The mono mix, mix was the that was the preferred mix. That's the one they spent all their time in, our time on. And in the stereo mix, they kind of it was kind of a throwaway mix, um, more or less. They they did they did put time into it, but it wasn't. It was kind of a secondary thing back then. Was the stereo mix. So the stereo mixes of some of the Beatles albums are kind of a little bit. Yeah, <clears throat> and the mono mix is kind of considered the superior one. Well, what he did is he went back and he, I'm talking about Giles Martin, uh, son of George Martin. Uh, he went back and used the original mono mix as the reference point to make this new stereo mix. And it's amazing how he took that mono mix and he kind of, the way he edited things together and it's, it's, it sounds very elementary to say that it's the, it's the mono mix in stereo, but it's very close to the integrity of the mono mix, but it's just this incredible new stereo mix. Um, and like I said, I kind of feel horribly ignorant for not picking this up earlier because it is so good. In fact, you know, a lot of people are kind of going to go say, well, the mono mix is the best. The original mono mix is the best. Okay, fine. It's the best. But this is the best reissue I've heard. In fact, I, I will go on record and saying it's probably on par with that original mono mix, which obviously is the way they intended it. But, and, he, and he used that as a reference point of what would the band want um, um, re in relation to the mono mix, which was, like I said, which was the Beatles preferred mix, the one they signed off on, the ones, that's the one they wanted. Um, if you see this kicking around, uh, apparently it's going out of print if you trust several sites. There's, there's still copies kicking around, pick it up if you don't have it. The second album of Outtakes is interesting. It's kind of like the anthology series, it's very interesting takes, which I like. I like the anthology series, to be honest with you. Some of the alternate takes are, I found were better than the album takes. But um, an amazing job. And you know what? I'm going to have to, uh, I, I will admit when I'm wrong, I'm going to turn my thinking around to these new Beatles, uh, Giles Martin mixes, and I'm probably going to pick up Abbey Road and the White Album just to see what he did with these ones, with those ones, because this one, honestly, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go on too much about this album, but it, um, you hear, you do hear things. I think the only one criticism I have is the drums are a little bit too high up in the mix in the sense that when, you know, Ringo plays a lot of toms on this album, um, those are a bit loud in the mix. It kind of be, it kind of, you know, on headphones, it's a little bit, a little bit harsh to hear. But um, apart from that, that, that's nitpicking. Um, yeah, anyways, I don't know where I was going with that, but just an incredible mix. Um, I, I honestly thought that it was a very it was a big gimmicky to have the son of George Martin go back and remix these albums. But he's not just remixing them; he's use he's the integrity he's using 
uh, is incredibly high, and I have to uh, I have to give him credit where credits due. He he did an amazing job with Sergeant Peppers, and I'm really interested to hear. I've I've read great things about the Abbey Road one, so I'm gonna maybe get that one next, and then go back to the um, the White Album and see what he did with that one. There we go. I know this is a bit long. Sorry. You guys know I talk a lot. Anyways, uh, one more time. Cheers, everyone. I'm not sure where my next video is going to be. Um, I was doing it weekly. It's um, Sometimes when you do too many videos, it's, you, you become white noise a bit. You know, you see oh, another video by this guy and you flip by. You kind of take him for granted a bit. So uh, I might space my videos out a bit more. Um, just because. Just because. Um, and apart from that, I want to say thank you to everyone uh, for watching my videos. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, I, like I always say, uh, leave a comment, uh, subscribe if you want, give a thumbs up, give a thumbs down. Doesn't matter to me. Thumbs down don't bother me. Um, but uh, follow me on Instagram, N-A-Z-Z -Z underscore N-O-M-A-D, Naz underscore Nomad. Uh, that's my username on Instagram. You can see what I'm playing, see what I'm into, see what I'm doing. I ain't doing much. I'm listening to music mostly. Anyways, that's it. That's all. I want to say thank you to everyone once again. And we'll see you next time. David Michael, a.k.a. Naz Nomad. Next time. Peace.